Okay. Um, so, uh, welcome. Um, I was just waiting to see if anybody is going to show up um, and have any questions about the uh, assignment five here. So I thought I would um, say a few more things about the assignment five. Um, so I know uh, quite a few people are working on it. I've been getting questions about it. Um, so uh, let me go ahead and start. Um, last time we had talked about like the first three tasks, but I, and, and I hadn't talked a lot about the last two tasks. So I thought I'd, I'd mention one or two things about that um, and post this video then. So, um, uh, let's start up our um, dev box here. GitHub here. Find my repository. go um let's see if we're up yet okay yeah we should be up um, yeah so got assignment five up here so um so uh before i talk about tasks the, the last two tasks um let me just uh, remind, so I've been having, having a couple of people asking about uh, throwing the exceptions. Um, so I did show that last time. Um, so um, But uh, you also need one of these, uh, I, I probably skipped over it, but you actually need one of these in the uh, uh, copy constructor that you're going to um, be creating. So, so I didn't talk about that, but there are some tests uh, in the copy constructor um, that you need to create. Uh, this, is, this is the first task. Um, so uh, the, the basic idea for that is that, so to pass those tests um, where it's expected an exception to be thrown, um, what it's just looking for is that whether you give a begin or an end that's outside of the bounds for this list. Okay, so, so for the list that's packed in here, um, you have to check uh, if begin or end are less than zero, or you have to check if begin or end um, are greater than or equal to this list size that's input in there. All right, All right so the, the list size that you get as uh, input. Um, um, for people that that um, may may not have watched the previous video, so this is actually just a copy right now of the um, of the copy constructor. So this is a copy of the the other constructor here that takes a list. So this isn't actually working yet. So we actually have to modify this to copy only the indicating sub portion of the list. So, but anyway, um, I mean, the, there was an example, for example. Um, um, a good place to start if you don't know about throwing an exception uh, is in the overloaded uh, indexing operator. So here, so for example, you could, you could copy that and, and use that. You can use that both for this and for the merge, right? But the, basically, before you start trying to use this list, um, you should be checking, you know, whether begin is less than zero or begin is greater than or equal to not 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 this list size, but this but the other list is passed in here, right? Um, um, and also, you have to do that for end as well. So um, if end is less than zero or end is greater than equal to size, you have to throw an exception, right? So, um, and but but the code the the tests on task one are just um, uh, expecting. Um, Um, 
a list memory bounds exception be thrown. So, so the same one, all these, all these where you are throwing an exception in this assignment, you should just be throwing a list memory bounds exception, I believe. So, um, so we are throwing the right one, um, but um, you, you know, besides doing your check, you might want to change your um, your error message a little bit too. Right? So. Um, all right. So after you get your merge and sort working, the last two functions that are to, to work on a binary search. Um, so let's look at, so for task four, you're gonna be implementing the actual binary search and, and um, we've seen um, an iterative version of this uh, this week, right? So, so a version that uses a loop to, to implement the binary search. Um, but um, um, I asked you to, to implement binary search using recursion here. So that's a requirement of task four. You have to, to make it a recursive function, okay? Um, So let's look at uh, the uh, uh, tests again here for task four. So binary, for, for a binary search to work as you should have learned about uh, this week and as we was one of the questions on our quiz for this week. Um, the, the list has to be sorted for a binary search to work, okay? So if you look carefully at the test, here for task four, you'll see that. Or, well, oh, um, actually, we make use of your sort function. So, so yeah, this won't be working if you don't uh, have your sort working correctly here. You won't be able to um, uh, do these tests here for the binary search, right? Well, anyway, so if we have like a, a list of values and we sort them, um, they're not going to be sorted order uh, alphabetically by the first character or, or you know whatever the first letter is in each of these names. Um, um, so once it's sorted, it's, it's safe to do a search. Okay, so the binary, your binary search returns an integer value, which is just a index into the array, right? So for example, if, um, if we say search from zero to 19, so there's 20 values in this list. So the valid indexes are zero, one, two, three, up to 19. So the first one's at index zero, the last one's at index 19. Um, so these um, as we've been doing for the last two assignments, this one and the previous one, um, these are inclusive indexes. So if I want to search the whole list, I have to start at index zero and specify up to the last valid index in the array, which is um, in, in the list, which is index 19 here. Um, so, And you should understand from our materials this week what a search does, right? So um, um, the search is, is going to be looking through this list for a particular set of values. So for a binary search, you know, it'll um, uh, it should start by looking at the index at the middle. So if you take nineteen plus zero, at that together, divide by two, you get the middle index. So that would be um, uh, nine point five. Um, and if you're doing integer division, you would end up at right at index nine. So, so this one, you know, the value at index nine is the one that we're searching for. So and that's the best case scenario. So the value is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is indeed Morpheus, right? So we expect it to return um, a valid index. So, so what, what's returned is the index where it found the key. Um, or for failed searches, you should be uh, returning um, special indicator and not found. Right? So that's defined for you in the, um, the list.hpp uh, as a global constant here. So we just use negative one because valid indexes have to be greater than zero. So we can use like a negative number. It's like an error code here, right? Um, Okay, everybody sees the signature of this, I hope though. So it returns an integer, so it just returns an integer index. Uh, it does have to return a signed integer because we can return that error code, which is a negative number. Uh, and it takes three values, it takes a string, so, so you should be passing in a regular string as the first parameter. And, and then uh, two integers for the index. Okay. So that, that's the signature of the function. Right. Now, um, the the, ver the iterative version that we looked at, at, at in our class um, 
in our lecture videos, um, used a loop. So you start off by defining, um, or well, in this case, you could use the, the, this as the first and last index or the begin and end index. Uh, and then you define, uh, for the iterative version, you define a local variable like middle that you calculate the midpoint of that. Uh, and then inside of the loop, you keep uh, checking. Um, so, um, so inside the loop, you, you first assign middle to the, the current middle of whatever the current first and last are. Uh, you check the value at that middle if it's the one you're searching for, like Morpheus in this first task here. If it is, you just return immediately the index. If not, um, you, you check whether the value you're searching for is less than or greater than the value at your middle index. And if it's less than, uh, that means it has to be to the left portion of the list. So you would you would modify the the end to be equal to the middle minus one, so that you've now um, shifted your list to be you know the 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 smaller part from zero up to, but not including the middle index, right? Um, and, and if the value you're searching for, uh, so, so like, right, if it's less than like Agent Brown here on the very first iteration, um, uh, we would check nine again, but uh, we wouldn't find it at nine and we would find that the value is less than. So now for the second iteration of the loop, you know, our first would still be zero, but our last would be uh, index eight, so middle minus one. Right? But then we just keep doing a loop. So every, every time we fail to find the value, we modify either the, the the first or the last, the first or the last, depending on the comparison that we make. Right. So for um, recursive search, you do a lot of the same things. Um, so the, the 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 base case is simple. So if end is less than or equal to begin, um, then, then that means that there's one item in the list, okay? So, so actually it's probably easier to, to break this up into two base cases, okay? So if, if end is strictly less than uh, begin, um, the, the, there's nothing left in the list. So the result was um, um, uh, the, you failed the search, so you should return a not found. But if, if end is equal to begin, um, there's one value. So in that case, um, um, so if there's one value, it, it, you can test the, the value at that location. If it's the value you're looking for, then the result uh, was a successful search and you, you return that index, that one and only index when begin is equal to end. But if the item is not the one being looked for, um, you can immediately return uh, not found then instead. Right? So. Um, but then your recursive case is that um, you're going to calculate um, the middle index uh, from the remaining portion of the list, um, like you like we did for the iterative version. So that's kind of the same. Uh, you're going to test the middle value, the value at the middle index. Um, and, and again, if it's what we're searching for, we return that index where we found the item to indicate success. But then, and then the, the difference, so instead of having a loop, um, if, if it's not, if the value you're searching for is not at the middle index, you're going to do a similar comparison. Um, so if it's less than, you're going to recursively call uh, yourself, recursively call search again, but you modify the um, the the end uh, to be middle minus one, right? or um, you know if we didn't find the value um, and the value is greater than the value at that midpoint um, that we're currently at, you would recursively call yourself. But in that case, you would change the begin to be middle plus one, so you'd be searching from middle plus one to end. So, so yeah, you are required to, to do a recursive version of the uh, binary search here, right? But if you do that, in, in, in many ways, I think the, the binary, the recursive version of the binary search is a little bit easier. Um, the, the code looks a little bit um, less complex without the, the, the loops um, and multiple uh, condition statements inside of the loop, so. Um, but, but yeah, if you implement that correctly, it should pass all of the, um, the tests.
the, the test here for task four. So. Um, and then for task five, like I was saying last time, so normally we don't have, um, uh, there's this kind of two deficiencies with the search that we have in our, um, in our list class so far. Um, so one is that, you know, we normally don't, you know, the user doesn't need, doesn't even really need to know the, the size of the list. If they want to search for something, they just want to give the item that they want to search for and nothing else, right? So by default, and, and by default, normally a user wants to search the whole list. So they don't, don't want to search just a some portion of the list. So, um, So yeah, a more normal um, interface for search is to just have a single parameter, the value you want to search for, and it returns the same kind of result. So either the index where it's found or a not found result, right? Um, so that's one thing. And the other thing though, is that um, um, we want to make it so that, um, I mean, you know, binary search, one thing, one thing you definitely should have learned or understood from the materials this week is that um, binary search is much better than linear search, but uh, it doesn't work unless the values are sorted before you try and do the binary search. Right? So we're going to try to enforce that. Um, so we're going to add some functionality to our search method. So that if you call search, we're first going to check whether the list is sorted or not. If it's not sorted, we'll first go through the do the work of sorting the list. Um, um, and then we will do the search after. So that would that also simplifies from the person wanting to use the search um, that um, um, they don't have to worry about how the implementation is done. It's a, like a binary search uh, in this case, um, and, and that they might need to sort the list first before they can search it. So they can just call search, um, and the list will sort itself if it needs to first, um, and then perform the binary search. So um, is sorted um, should work like this. So, so there, there's two unit test cases for task five. And the first one is kind of testing the is sorted. You could break your task five into two subparts. So get the, the is sorted working and then um, add in the uh, second version of the search member function. Um, so to check if something is sorted or not. So, so is sorted. Um, returns a Boolean result, so true or false. So if you call it is sorted, so is sorted doesn't take any parameters, so, so it has a pretty simple signature. So it, it is a member function of the list class. So you can call these on lists. Uh, it doesn't take any input, it just returns either true if the list is currently sorted or false if it's not, all right? So there's a couple of ways that you could have approached this, um, uh, but I'm, I'm th th there's a required way that you have to solve this. So, so one way, I mean, we could actually add like a member variable and remember whether we sorted it or not, right? So then every time is sorted is called, we would set sorted to be true. Uh, but but that that's a little bit oops, that's a little bit uh, tough because um, um, the problem is is that I could create a list that I kind of add the values in by hand where it's already sorted. Um, so. Um, so, so even if you try to do a member variable that keeps track of whether it's been sorted yet or not, uh, that's still not 100% sufficient because you can't guarantee that somebody doesn't create a list that's already sorted. Right? So, so you really do need like, like a method that can check whether it's sorted or not. Right? Um, so I'll probably describe the algorithm here. Um, so the basic idea is, is that uh, um, what you can do is you can start at the beginning of the list and compare value zero to value one, right? So, so value zero should be less than, um, um, less than value one, right? Should be less than or equal to value one. You can't have equal values um, like um, yeah, neo, neo, here, and so on. Um, so to check the sorted, uh, what you could do is, is you could check the value at zero. And if it's greater than the value in one, that means the value zero and one are out of order relative to each other, right? So, so zero is greater than one, you return false, right? 
but um, um, if it's not the case that zero is greater than one, you want to have a loop here. So, so you should be using a loop. Um, for sorry, I guess, I guess you could do recursion here. I didn't. I probably didn't specify. I didn't make a requirement, but it's probably easier to, to just make a loop here. Um, so anyway, yeah. So so if zero and one are in order, then you want to test value one and two. Right. So if one is greater than two, you return false. If not, um, you continue on and test two against three. Right. So basically, you're going to iterate through the list. You have to be careful at the end because at the end you want to check. You know, so if my size of the list is five, the last test I should be doing is three and four, right? So, so um, once I get to index four, I shouldn't be comparing four to five because for a list of size five, there's only indexes zero to four. So you have to be careful. It's easy to make an off by one error here. Uh, but, you know, if you, you should be using the, um, um, the overloaded um, indexing operator to, to access the values, or you can use the overloaded operator um, to, to test the values here, um, which would throw an exception if you go beyond the ends of the array, right? So, um, Um, so I'm just trying to remember. I'm not certain if I if I specify. I mean, this sorted is an example of a method that only returns information. So um, it, it it probably should be declared as a constant function. So when you call it sorted, it shouldn't modify the list in any way. Let me check if um, I'm looking at uh, issue five on the requirements that I had um, on there. Um, yeah, I might not have specified it, so um, so I may not take it off. But but again, um, uh, is sorted probably sh should be declared as a constant function, right? Although um, uh, the reason why I'm hesitating now, I think about that though. If, if you declare it as a constant function, um, um, you won't you probably won't be able to use the operator uh, overloaded operator because it's unsafe. Um, you know, so, so you can use this to actually modify the list. So, so inside a constant function, you usually can't use this function as we, as some people found out last time. We discussed it briefly for the previous assignment. So, um, but yeah, in that case, um, if you declare it to be constant, like you probably should, uh, you'll just have to directly use the um, um, the array of values that you have, and just be careful that you don't make the the um, off by one error and go past the end of the array. All right. Um, so that is, um, is sorted. Now, when you have the is sorted working, then um, um, I ask you to use that to, to make uh, this alternative version of search, okay? So, so maybe I'll give you the, the, the um, 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 prototypes for these, okay? So one thing I wanted to point out is that, you know, it's, it's perfectly valid to have what are known as overloaded operators or overloaded member functions um, in a class here. In fact, you know, really, there's multiple versions of the constructor. So this is also another example of overloading. That we have here, but but in this case, um, um, and, and we will talk more about overloading um, in um, uh, another week or two here, right? But in this case, you've got two versions of, of search. Um, so the first version from class four. Um, again, doesn't actually modify the. Um, the list, so it could be a constant function. Uh, I, I didn't specify that either. Uh, but but um, um, so the recursive version of the list, we have to have the begin and end parameter so we can use those to implement the recursion. Um, um, 
but your the, the, the second version for task five has the same name, but its signature is different. So this is an example of, of overloading. This is perfectly valid. So if I call search and I only give uh, one parameter, like, like we do here for the, the, the second set of test cases for test five, it knows from that signature that we only have one string parameter and then it should be calling this version of the search function in our list class, right? Now, this version definitely can't be a constant because um, what you're doing in task five is um, Um, is providing this alternative implementation of search. So what search should be doing in this alternative version, it's, 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 it's really not going to do much. In fact, this, this will be the easiest function that you write of all of them in here. Um, so basically what, it, it, what this should do is it should first check if the list is sorted. And if it's not, it should call sort on itself to, to first sort the list, all right? So it should call your sort function by hand uh, to sort the list. So you need to reuse is sorted um, and your sort. Um, and that'll be the first thing you'll do in the search right? And that's one reason why this version of search can't be constant because it is possible that the list has to be sorted. So you can't guarantee that you're not gonna be modifying the content of the list here. Um, but yeah, because of that, you know, there's, there's no, you're not required to make the uh, recursive, the, the other overloaded version of search be constant either. You know? Um, and then after you check if it's sorted and sort if it needs to, you just need to call the uh, actual binary search. So, so you're one from um, task three uh, to, to search the whole list. So you'll want to, to call search, uh, but, but have it search the whole list. Um, and then that search will return the result. So either the index where it found it or the not found, uh, and that's what you should be returning from your own, from the second version of the, the search method, All right? Um, so yeah, like, and like this shows at the very beginning here. So if we start off with this list um, one, um, that's unsorted, um, and if we call search, so at, and, and we search for a value, um, I mean, it, it correctly finds the value we're looking for, even though the list was unsorted, because um, it first needed to sort the list. So if, if we check and see if the list is sorted or not, um, after we call the, the search here, um, we see that, that the list um, is, is sorted. Um, I could have also added a test to, to explicitly call uh, l one is sorted, and it should return true. Um, after we um, actually perform the search here. Uh, all right. Um, okay, so yeah, so that uh, I'll go ahead and post this video. Um, and uh, if you watch this or you know, you're working on your assignment five, uh, keep sending email questions. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later.